What's up guys, Cliff101 here, bringing you another, oh my god, this is the second episode this has happened. Bringing you another installment of Final Fantasy IX, this is episode 14. Uh, so basically what's happened in the last couple of episodes is we've uh, done our thing in Lindblom, uh, done the festival of, festival of the Hunt, and now we are on our way to Burmesia. I've done a little bit of leveling up, a little bit of uh, learning abilities and everything. Uh, so now we're just going to continue on forwards in our quest to uh, do something in the game. So um, yeah, you can see uh, I've jumped up a couple of levels. If you remember what levels I was uh, in the last episode, I don't remember what I was. I think I was level 12, somewhere around there, something like that anyway. So uh, moving steadily forward into episode 14, which isn't too bad. I'm going to come here into this uh, marshy area, some kind of area, not too sure what it is. I suppose we'll find out in a second. Q's uh, Marsh, that's called Q's Marsh. Pretty original name, I suppose. Hmm. Good on your cliff with your tail wagging about behind, well it's not really wagging, it's just kind of like swaying about as you run. I suppose <clears throat> more random battles, random battles can be such a pain. I don't think I've versed these guys before. I haven't been in this marsh yet so uh, I'm not too sure what's actually in here. I don't know. Oh, water. Nice. Ah. Oh. 24 damage, not too bad. So uh, not too too much damage. I can I can deal with that, you know. It's a good thing I'm a, a, I'm a fairly high level for where I am. My my friend Catters, the Catters, his YouTube channel is. Um, he's just uploaded his 14th episode in this area, and uh, well, my Cleef and Ratty and Catters are level uh, 17, uh, 15, and 14. He's uh, level six. So I, I'm very much overpowered for where I am, uh, but I, at the same time I would say that he is underpowered as well. He hasn't done sort of like any leveling up at all, and uh, for the monsters that are here, he sort of struggles a little bit against them. But you know, gets underway. He hasn't died yet, which is good. Uh, I, and I'll leave I'll leave a link to his channel and his playthroughs in the description for you guys if I remember to. <laughs> that way you can go check out his playthrough of Final Fantasy IX and see the differences between our playthroughs uh, and, and how we go about things. Maybe he'll say some information that I haven't said or vice versa. Um, and that way you get a more complete sort of uh, story, more complete uh, experience of the game, I suppose. So uh, yeah, we're just going to make our way through uh, through the marsh. There is a reason why I'm coming through here. Obviously, is to meet this guy, hungry. Mm. I'm gonna catch a frog. Cliff caught a frog, and he's gonna give it to the Q. I don't know what to call Q. Yeah, uh, yeah. Spoiler alert: he becomes character. Um, I probably shouldn't have said that before. But I think, and I said it in a, an earlier commentary, that I was going to call him Ulti. Um, I can't fit Ultima Odin in there, so I'll just put in Ulti. He'll like that. <laughs> He's not here at the moment, so he doesn't know what's going on. Do you want this frog? Yes, yes! I want that frog. So we don't know what he is. Uh, or, or what it is. We every time uh, the Ulti's gender is referred to, it's always he slash she. So the game never specifies. It never actually specifies uh, what gender uh, Ulti is. But for the sake of trying not to confuse everyone, I I will just call him a he. It's just easier just labeling him a gender as opposed to it. It sounds a bit insensitive, so yeah. Not master out of eating, just chasing frogs, Ulti. But master, frogs very good. 
They talk like robots. Frogs here best, better than Alexandria's. Ulti, you in darkness, need some light. <laughs> World big place, many many fools. Alexandria just one kingdom. You need go out more, eat other food. Go out into world? Sounds scary. Are there yummier frogs outside? Of course, many good frogs. <laughs> All cues love frogs best. Eating frogs is key to growth. They sound like Indians, like uh, not in, not uh, yeah, like uh, um, uh, Native Americans. Q marshes exist all over the world. <laughs> Go eat frogs in other marshes. I promise you get much learning. <laughs> Traveler, please show OT the world. Anywhere with good food, with food good. You are saying with us? Yeah, sure. Why not? He actually proves out to be sort of useful. Uh, will I find yummier frogs outside? There is plenty of stuff in the world that tastes better than frogs. Really? Really? Okay, I go with you. <laughs> Pretty funny. So, uh, yeah, he becomes a character. He uses uh, blue magic as opposed to... It's, the, it's uh, the only kind of magic that isn't in this game is red magic. So, he uses blue magic, uh, which is basically like your... Uh, enemy skill from FF7. It's uh, like your level five death. It's your uh, level level four down. It's your uh, white wind. Your big mighty guard sort of uh, uh, magic as opposed to your white and black magic, where it's just purely attack and purely healing. Uh, your blue magic is a mix in between, and it's normally done on percentages, not on set values. Uh, like uh, so. When I say percentages, it's generally done on like the gap in between your current health and your max health, um, things like that. Not actual like 30% or, or 25%, like what a cure or what a fire would be, sort of thing. So yeah, that's basically. Um, it, 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 I'm pretty sure your magic attack level has little bearing on it. It does have. A bit of bearing for some of the attacks, like your flamethrower and stuff. But in terms of like your white wind and whatnot, your magic attack doesn't really have too much bearing on it. So this scene just here, um, we find out that Quail, which is the bloke in there, looks like Vivi's grandpa, um, Quan, and he's saying he doesn't know him, but in re he, he's saying he doesn't know him, but he implies he does through his reactions. Um, but we we just think that he doesn't sort of thing. So yeah, Cliff, can I catch frogs? I'll do it later, and I'll. I don't know whether I want to do it on screen or off screen. Uh, I'll do it off screen, just like the chocobos. Uh, I'll show you about the chocobo uh, forest and everything, but I won't actually do the thing on screen. I'll do it off screen. Um, and then at the end of the game, this is Mogster, so you remember Mogster. Um, that's where he is, he's in the Q's Marsh. And, and uh, basically at the end of the game, when I'm at the very end of the game, I will go through and I will do all of the Chocograph um, uh, things. So I won't collect every, I, I won't collect any uh, Chocograph throughout the game. I'll do it at the end of the game and do it as like a mini side quest walkthrough for you guys. So you guys get to see the location of every single... Um, take a graph in the game. So I'm going to equip some things on ulti here. Uh, for I'm going to put on a feather hat because it's best. Uh, glass armlet. I will put on a silk shirt and let yellow scarf. So yeah, uh, just in case you didn't know, uh, for those who didn't know, if you press square in between. Um, from your ability. So if you press your square button, it swaps between your ability and your weapon equips. So yeah, just in case you didn't know that. So we'll try and get into a battle here. The only problem with being overpowered is it makes it more difficult for Ulti to be able to eat foods uh, because uh, when you're in battle he has a command called eat and when an enemy, get, an enemy gets below a certain percentage of health then you can eat uh, the enemy and some enemies have abilities that you can learn from eating them some they just taste bad or something um, so I'm gonna get Ratty to attack and then I'm gonna get Ulti to eat because Cleef is too powerful he'll kill it in one shot and that's not what I want to do so I'll get 
cutters to use that, and then I will eat. And I'll see if this enemy has a has an ability that uh, catters is able to uh, not catters, that ulti is able to learn. Uh, I'm not sure if I can. I'm just gonna heal while I'm here, I suppose. I know I can eat until weaker, so I'll use another fire, and then I'll eat. Uh, and so basically, you, you saw the ability there. He tries to eat the opponent, but the host, his health is not low enough. So I'm going to give it another go after another fire. He should be weak enough after you know 200 HP has been taken from him. So we'll see if uh, this enemy has an ability. Some of Ulti's abilities are really, really useful, especially early on in the game. But generally speaking, he's a character that's not really used. Um, no, I'm not going to worry about it because I'm pretty sure that this enemy doesn't have an ability that I can learn. So die! Um, yeah, there are other other enemies that you can uh, defeat and learn their abilities, like level five death and big guard. I think you can learn all those in this area. I'm not 100% sure. It's been a while since I've done it. Uh, but we're going to be on our way to the Chocobo Forest, so that way I can show you uh, Choco. The Chocobos. Bridge. So when we were looking through the telescope uh, earlier in Lindblom, we saw all these places. So the Chocobo Forest is one of them, because uh, we, we spotted the Chocobo near a forest. Uh, so that's where we're going, this is the Chocobo Forest, and then you get to be introduced into another mini game. So we were just introduced into one mini game, which is the frog catching one. Now we're about to be introduced to the next one, which is the Chocobo digging one. The Chocographs. Digging for Chocographs. So it can be quite tedious, um, but you know, it's, it's fun to pass the time. I've spent so many hours on this. Uh, particular side quest before mini game side quest. Um, I've yet to actually, in any of my playthroughs, reach the 10,000 points to be able to get the Robe of Lords. Uh, <laughs> I think the highest I've gotten is something like 6,000 or something like that, and that's playing a lot of games, you know. For, for each game, I would probably average maybe uh, at the end of it because you, your beak level gets much higher. Uh, I'll, I'll show you what I mean when when we when we go through here. I'll show you what I mean by your points and uh, your beak level and everything like that. So uh, we're going to give this a go. Do, 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 do. We see a chocobo being chased by a moogle. Rat roll. Kaboom! I mean, master of this forest. This chocobo is my friend. Kipu. His name is Choco, and he's uh, going to run away. And this is Chocobo's Forest. <laughs> oh, you guys didn't see that one coming, I know. Hey, did a cute girl with long hair come by here? No, but ugly girl come back here. Oh, I guess she's an ugly girl. Maybe she's heading towards Bermesia after all. I better get moving. You want to hurry? Boom! Yes, we will. Then take Choco. You won't run into monsters if you ride Choco. So, uh, if you want to get around places and you don't want random battles, just get on Choco. It's okay, don't force it. No, if Choco hates, Choco runs away. Choco, come on. Kaboom! He's gonna run away. <laughs> Fine, I'll just get to the point. These are Gissel Greens. You can call Choco outside the forest with these. So before we uh, saw Gissel Pickles in uh, Lindblom, now we get Gissel Greens, which are Chocobo's favourite food. And I'll show you how they work in this game. So, I'm going to leave. And right next to the Chocobo Forest, we'll find some Chocobo prints on the, on the ground. Uh, they're in FF7 and this game as well. I'm pretty sure they're the only two games that feature Chocobo prints on the world map. So, we're just going to... Uh, da -da -da -da, right in front of me. I didn't want to press square, that was silly. Go back. Da -da 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 -da, item and I want to use a Gissel Green. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to just make it all nice and pretty. 
Guess we're green. And quick! So, Chocobo comes. Hello! And I'm a get on you! Now, if you, in FF7, if you uh, did this in, on an untrained uh, Chocobo, you could only get them in battle. Uh, and if you hopped off of it, then it ran away. In this game, it's not the case. So, I've got Choco. Away, Koopo! Cool. So, I've got my Chocobo now. And now we're going to find out what the big secret is. Did you know, Koopo, once Chocobo chooses its master, it follows him forever. Choco ran away from his last master. That guy was mean. Choco didn't like him. I helped Choco escape. Now we're living together. Here's the thing. Choco has the ability to seek out treasures and items hidden underground. But I can't ride Chocobos. Will you help me? 60 gil per game and you keep all the items Choco digs up. Sure, so we're playing hot and cold. The game is hot and cold. Basically, uh, I'll let you use Choco's ability for 60 gil per minute. Okay, cool. So, uh, these are the rules of the game once they pop up. Uh, to move Choco around, is the, uh, you know, moving around, you dig with square. Choco lets you know uh, how close you are to a treasure when he finds it, just dig, 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 Koopo. So here that you go, quit means there is nothing. Quit with an exclamation with question mark means it's far away. It longer means you're really, really close. And when it's the big, uh, big one, it means you actually found something. So rare treasures are buried deep. Once you find something, dig with square until depth reaches zero. So select to start. Here we go. So we're just going to go through, press square, until I can find um, a bigger que. I love this music. So there's one around here somewhere. And this is the really big pain in the butt thing. So six. So it's a pretty deep one. This looks like it's going to be a chocograph. Stone with patterns. 20 points. Special bonus, you get 5 additional points. Choco's Beak became level 2, level 3. So now instead of digging at 6 at a time, you will dig at um, more than 6. 8. That's good. Soft, I found a soft. 1 point. It's not bad. So at the moment I've got 26 points. That's pretty good for the, start, for the very start. Um, you would never expect to get that many points at the start of the game. Just got to find another one. Sometimes you can sit here doing this for such a long time, just trying to find it. And I just found it when the time ran out. So, yeah. Stone with patterns, 25 points. With a soft is 26 points, which isn't too bad. What's this stone with patterns? Can I see Koopo? There's a picture of some location on the stone. This place must have tons of treasures. Why don't you go out of the forest and look for this place? Koopo is very in charge of course. Go outside and press triangle while you're riding on Choco to choose which stone you want to find. Uh, you can dig with square. I've got an idea. Let's call this stone Chocograph from now on. Chocograph? I think Choco has been searching for something all his life. There must be tons of treasures. You might find some cards, so you should leave some room in your card inventory. So yeah, that's basically the um, the side game, uh, the Chocobo side game of Chocobo Forest. There are other areas throughout the game as you level Choco up that you can uh, explore and do this uh, hot and cold in. But until then, um, we just stay in there. Uh, basically, you just continue on and continue on, leveling up Choco's... Uh, uh, beak, uh, so that way it becomes much easier to be able to dig and uh, you find items. So we're going to go in here and see, tell me if you recognize this place. When it loads up. And oh, this is the place that we had Baku here um, when we were in Lindenwood. And here we will find some coffee, mocha coffee for Morid back in the village of Dali. So that's good. We found one of the coffees. He wanted four or three. Three or four coffees, I think. I, I don't know. I, to be perfectly honest, I've never done the side quest before. It's a big pain in the butt. <laughs> um, so, yeah. 
we're just going to get on Choco again and we're just going to continue on that's all we have to do in this area the next place that we go to is Gizemaluk's Grotto which is right here so I'm going to end to end the episode right here guys hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, watching me uh, do all this, all the side bits and, and whatnot, and uh, we'll just continue on in the next episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you later. Comment, rate, subscribe, leave me a like, and help me spread this series around. Cheers, guys.